Hey everyone, welcome to another Broken Meeple review, and I'm having to re-record this for the second time now. I did a review for this one and two other videos, and because of the whole depth of field thing, the problem I'm having with this particular lens at a slanted angle, I had to basically scrap three recordings because it was just, they, they couldn't be salvaged. They were just horrible. I was blurry, the game was blurry, it just sucked. So hopefully this one's a bit better for you. Anyway, Jai Pur, this is a classic among the two player games for people who are into gaming. If you've not heard of it, then, well, you can look forward to this video, but hopefully a lot of you gamers know of its existence. This is a two player trading card game. Yeah, trading, hang on, with two players, how's that work? Well, in this one, it's a best of three, and each of you are basically merchants doing the whole thing of, oh look, jewellery and leather and gold and silk and spices, you know, that kind of thing. But the idea is, is that there is a row of cards in the middle and each of you has a hand of cards as well. And what you're doing is you're trading hands between, sorry, trading cards between your hand and that market row. Now you have some camels. Watch out, they spit. As well, which aren't tradable, but what you do, well, not, they're not tradable for victory points, but you can trade them with the market row for cards and there's a bonus at the end of the round if you have the most camels. But other than that, they're basically there just to clog up the row. And the idea is, is that once you've got enough cards to play a set, of at least, well, it can be a set of just one card if need be, except for the expensive ones. You play the card and you take a token for that particular good that's worth a certain amount of victory points. But the victory points go in descending order of like how good they are. So the earlier you get to a type, the more victory points it will be worth. And of course, certain types are worth more than others, like leather is the cheapest one, and then gold, I believe, is the most expensive. And the idea is, is that you're collecting sets of these goods in order to play them to get the points. The more cards in a set that you play, the more bonus points you can get. And of course, if you have the most camels, you'll also get the most victory points there. Once that's done, um, a certain amount of piles have to be exhausted for the game like round end to trigger. And then everybody just totals up their points. And of course, the person with the most points wins. Of course. And that's pretty much it. You essentially play that another one or two times, as I say, a best of three. You just rinse and repeat, go again, new market row, deck of cards, some camels each, and you just keep going. And it's that simple. And that's one of the things about this whole sort of Jaipur craze that everybody loves it. And I gotta admit, I'm one of those people as well. I've already played this game enough, so it's not like I had to review it in like brand new or anything. I had the previous edition to this. This is the second edition reprint. And all that has changed is the artwork is a lot better. But other than that, nothing. That is, is, is it. I mean, there is no other change to this game other than pure aesthetics. The artwork has been upgraded to introduce the world to, yet again, more of Vincent Dutrait's, like, you know, really good artwork. Seriously, is this guy a machine? I swear he does nothing but draw his entire life. Does he have a family? Does he have kids? Does he do anything else in his life, go on holiday or whatever? No, all I see is his artwork. He's not human. This guy is not human. But. You know, the game itself is very portable. It comes with a nice little tray insert that holds all the tokens, even a little metal coin, which is kind of pointless, but it's nice, it's nice to have it there. And of course, the cards in the middle, which I can prove, sleeved. They work sleeved. If you get like close enough sleeves to them, they will fit in the middle pile just fine. Rule book on top, whole lot closes, and you have a very portable two player game. The game itself only takes about 30 minutes tops, possibly even less if you're like particularly quick on the buck. I mean, it's the best of three, so you might only be playing two rounds per game. You can have as little or more table space as you like. You've got the market row and a deck of cards. Your hand is in your hand, and you play cards, you can just play them to a discard pile. In terms of the piles of tokens, the rule book in that does say like, oh yeah, lay them out in a big line so you can see descending order. But frankly, if you are strapped for space, just put them in a stacked pile, you know, vertical with descending order victory points, and that will work just fine. So you can make this quite a compact two player game. I have taken it on camping trips before and it has done me just fine. Maybe you might be cutting it with um, airplane tables, you know, like chair tables, but I don't know, maybe someone out there has done that. Let me know if you have, you know, it'll be useful information for some people. But yeah, very portable, very quick, very nice looking. I mean, it's head and shoulders above the previous one in terms of its aesthetics, but you know, that's needed to be said. And it's just one of those classic two player games. So, okay, second edition, definitely better than the first. Do you need it? No, I mean, it's like if you've got the first edition, just keep the first edition, unless you are desperate for the artwork, because otherwise it's pretty much the same game. 
But the game itself, is it fun? You know, why is this one such a classic staple? Well, for those of you uninitiated with the game, it comes down to that very cool, that very cool tug of war between you and your other opponent. Because with that market row, you can either trade cards from your hand to the market row and back again, easily done. You can draw one card from the row, but then it has to replenish from the deck. And if you do that, there's a danger you might reveal a card that's highly valued by the opponent, then they can just take it on their turn. Or thirdly, you know, you're going to be playing the sets, which means that you don't have to do anything with the market row. Maybe the market row is full of such duds that you don't want to be a part of it. Well, I didn't want to trade these two spices, but if I trade, I'll get some points, and then the opponent might be forced to do something with the market row. Okay, fine. So there's a lot of this back and forth, back and forth between you and the opponent. There is, you know... I mean, not, not perfect information, but of course the stuff that's coming out of the deck is a slight luck of the draw, but other than that, you know what's in your hand and you can sort of guess or remember what the opponent's been drawing. Because you see it, you know, it's like it's there face up in front of you. You just saw your opponent take two or three brown cards, right? They're probably going to be starting to try and get five brown cards. Maybe I should not let them and take some brown cards or do it with the camels. Or maybe I should convert my two brown cards I have in my hand right now. Therefore, I take the two highest point tokens and then they're left with mostly little ones. You might be, you, know, you might narrow the point difference there. It's very close games. I mean, you can end up with occasions where somebody whitewashes the other, but for the most part, when you're counting up at the end, you'd be surprised how often that those bonuses, you know, sort of get in the way. And in terms of flaws, there's not a lot. It's, it's not a game that I want to play over and over and over again. And I don't necessarily like desire after not playing it for a while, oh yes, I must now play it. But it's just one that works. It's so smooth. The rules are so easy. The rule book's clear as day to follow. It's like four pages you need to read. It's just a perfect gateway two-player game, and now it looks beautiful. As I say, if I'm nitpicking any flaws, and I mean any flaws with this game, is that the luck of the draw is obviously an aspect. You know, if that bothers you, then you are going to have luck of the draw out in the market. You know, you may just end up, like, the opponent might reveal cards and they're just all rubbish for you, and then you reveal cards in the market, and, oh, look, it just happens to be diamonds. But the second thing is that the one thing I'm not as big a fan of is the bonus tokens. If you play three, four, or five cards in a set, you get an additional tile, which is bonus, token, um, bonus victory points. Problem is, it's a range. The first like three card set might range, I think, between one to three, and then the next one is four to six, and then uh, seven to nine. And that's a little bit irritating. I don't see why they were just fixed points. I suppose it's to kind of keep the opponent guessing as to whether he might be winning and might not, but it can be a bit swingy because, you know, I might have just picked up two bonus tokens for the uh, middle pile, like four card set, and got some fours. So I've got eight points for my two tokens. And then somebody else picks up, you know, only two of the tokens from the free card set, but picks up both of the frees. It's only a two point difference. And yet I put in more effort for those bonus points than he did, or he or she did. So that's a minor flaw, but it is a minor niggle. This is a 20 to 30 minute game. It is not meant to be a strategic fest. It is a nice, simple, streamlined, cool card game. Not much else to say. If you like the aesthetics of this new version, then by all means go and grab it. But otherwise, the first edition will do you fine because there is no other tangible difference other than aesthetics. That is it. And a slightly different shape box. Uh, I think the original was more kind of a um, sort of a longer, thinner one. This one's a little bit fatter. But frankly, whatever, both of them work. They stuck on the shelf. I mean, this one sits uh, literally back here next to outer rim. That's where it comes from. You know, nicely slots into place. So yeah, I'm glad to have a nice version, and honestly, if you're into two-player games, like you and your spouse, and you want something that's simple, portable, and just downright nice, I it's, there are not many two-player games I can recommend more than Jaipur. For me, it is a solid 8 out of 10, and 8 is still fantastic for me, it's just that I don't desire to play it every single day I, you know, I've been away from it, and it's not necessarily one I sh shove in my bag you know, to take to a game night always on top of other games, but frankly, like I say, if it's 8 or above, it means I absolutely adore the game, and as, just as a package, other than those tiny little niggles with luck, 
it's about as perfect a two-player gateway game as you can get. So that's Jiper 2nd Edition. Thank you for listening and watching. If you like what you see, please click the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos, other reviews, top 10s, a top 100 coming soon, and also solo plays. We're starting to get those in front. And of course, check out my podcast on SoundCloud. Until then, I'll see you on the next Broken Meeple review. And regardless of whether you've nicked me spice or you're um, you know, getting spat on by my camels, it's still only a game. Take care, and I'll see you next time.